we're going to talk about, uh, it's kind of a continuation of my last lecture I did for you guys, uh, just on cyber safety and things. Um, there's been a lot of question, actually lately, I can say in the last probably 40, 45 days, I've dealt personally with 28 different cases involving some type of hijacking of the computers and fraud of credit cards and identity theft. Now, that's not my uh, forte, but I, you know, I'm getting better at it every day, unfortunately. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about a few things tonight to also keep you guys safe and what to do and what not to do. How many people here have came from a Windows platform, Windows computers? Okay, a few, great. And the, if you get a Windows-based computer, just because of its nature of Windows, an antivirus, okay, an anti-malware program was needed for these devices. That's just the norm and it still is true today. Plus, there are many different uh, programs out there, utilities, to keep the Windows platform running. Apple, on the other hand, is a little different. Apple's not heading any bugs, but we'll talk more about that shortly. What we're going to talk about, uh, just reviewing a few Mac utilities, a lot of folks, the Apple, it's kind of like the Maytag washer. You put it in and it runs for five, six years, and then you buy another one. You really don't have to call Dennis to come fix it, or Jerry, or George, or Jeff. I mean, it's just not really all that needed. Dennis, you might want to mention, um, you really don't need to take notes on, on what he's showing you. Because we'll send, it, we'll send this out to you. I have a PDF I already gave to George that has all this on it, and it's also got a videotape that you guys can play back later. Um, so we're going to cover some of the uh, utilities. We'll talk about antivirus and anti-spyware programs. Mac ransomware, some of you may have heard, is the first true uh, bug for that actually will lock up the computer and want to charge your money to get your data back. Uh, Joe breaking the iOS. Some folks don't like the Apple uh, operating system on their phones and iPads and like to change it and make it more fun for them. And then we'll talk about how safe you are and go to some questions. What I did was I just took some of the, uh, I generally don't believe personally, in my opinion, I don't use any of the utilities unless I absolutely have to. So coming from me, that should say a lot because a lot, the old days, everybody wanted to over fix their computer. So they say, oh, if something froze, better go get an order disk doctor, or go get something to fix something. Well, there's nothing to really fix. Sometimes just to restart, usually on Apple fixes most things, which is kind of nice. However, there are a few, there actually, there are tons out there, but these are the ones that actually do a pretty decent job. So if you get into a situation, I'll we'll explain what some of these actually do, so that way you can say, hey, that one might be right for me for a problem I might be having, more than routine. Um, one of the things I put up here right away, see this little guy right here? His name is Matt Keeper. How many people have seen that before? Okay, he's a nasty little guy. He is not a utility, even though he is. <laughs> He's legal, illegal software. That's a mouthful in itself. But basically, you have a group of individuals. Who, uh, every website you surf, if you're looking at Apple stuff, whether you're on Mac forums, whether you're looking at Apple support, every now and then you're going to see an advertisement for Mac Keeper. That thing pops up. Sometimes we'll be doing an update for Java, Adobe Flash. We all do these routine updates. Sometimes if you go to the wrong site to do an update for Adobe, this gets partnered with it, all of a sudden now it's installed with the Adobe installer. Now it shows up in your computer, and it's a nasty little guy. So we'll talk more about him later, but just so you know, right off the bat, he's the one we don't like. Antivirus, anti-spyware. Well, I tell you what. What's happening, you're gonna see a whole bunch of things up here. These are all Mac products. Even though we have apples, there are zero viruses for Apple. Anybody hear what I just said? The big goose egg, zero viruses. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So, we'll talk whether or not we think it's worth putting antivirus on the machine or not. But there's other things called anti-spyware, anti-malware programs that kind of go in deep for some other things, like the ransomware that I just mentioned earlier, and we'll go talk about that later. These are just some different companies who make the products. I'm sure some of you've heard of North Utilities, McAfee, Trend Micro, Sophos. Uh, so these are all um, <laughs> utilities that actually like get rid of viruses and bugs. Um, even though Apple doesn't really have anything in a while, sometimes having them in your computer is a good thing because if you have friends with PCs, which is the majority of the planet, when they send you something in an email, you may not get the bug. But you actually can be the pusher to forward it on to your other friends with Windows computers. Now they get the virus, you just push it to them. So you're safe, but they got it. So sometimes these programs running will catch those bugs and quarantine it. 
Generally speaking, Apple doesn't need to routinely run repair programs. Apple does a good, job, a good job in itself. Usually when a computer's running for most of the day, most people leave their computers on, it runs to routines, it checks itself and keeps itself pretty healthy. Um, how many of you used to run disk permissions religiously? We all ran our disk permissions. Okay. Don't have to anymore without Capi 10. They've already started doing automatic uh, disk permission runs, usually with the operating system upgrades. So there's a few in between. So really still not necessary for us to do that. Apple is a very proactive company, unlike Microsoft, who is proactive, but their system hasn't changed technically since 95. Even though Windows 10 is here, that's what they're advertising on TV. It still has a basis of DOS. So think of Windows operating system like dominoes. You smack one domino, everything falls. Apple's more like a sandbox. Whatever's in this box isn't falling out of the box. So if something gets broken in the box, everything else around it is perfectly fine. So Apple and Windows do things it's a little bit different. But Apple is very proactive and they have several operating systems now. It's just not a Macintosh operating system that runs on our computers. We have the iOS, which is our iPhones, iPods, iPod Touches, and iPads. We have a watch OS for those who have the uh, Apple Watch. And the uh, Apple TV has its own operating system. And I'm sure when a car gets here, with the car OS and a few other things. So <laughs> Apple's got a lot of fun right now. It, sometimes you may get to a situation, and we're going to talk about in the next slide, where you may need to have a utility where they actually, can, when all else fails, they can't get to the Apple Store because of the lines. Sometimes these things work well. How many people have ever had the trash can full and they could never empty anything in a trash can? Oh, see, you have an Apple. That's one. <laughs> That's rare, but it does happen. Uh, cleaning caches safely. Sometimes uh, people who really use their computers, when I say users, some people just check the you know, the weather in different places, where they're up north and down here. Some just do emails, some just do some routine surfing and shopping. Minor use, maybe doing some photos, maybe some iTunes. That's normal wear and tear on the machine. These things can handle that daily. I got people who are pro users where they tend to, you know, like George, he's processing videos, processing pictures. You know, Jerry's doing a lot of things on his machine so that he can come back to you and say, hey, we tried out this utility, it didn't work out so well. So there's a lot, a lot of things that actually can slow the computer down over time and cleaning out the caches where temporary uh, files are contained, we can delete those and speed the computer back up. Permission issues. Uh, sometimes you, you may create a folder, something happened to a transfer, or you had to abruptly shut the computer down because it froze or something happened, where now you go to get, turn the computer back on, you click on a folder, try to get back into it, and it says you don't have permission. You just put the folder there, you did it. Now you can't get into it. But, uh, so many programs will allow you to actually Correct the permissions to get back into a folder. Not a routine thing, but it does happen. And then the biggest one these days is, you know, what's eating up my disk, disk space? Well, you know, unfortunately, Apple's done something different with their laptops. You know, the, the last big, big old, uh, uh, not the solid state hard drive, but the old traditional rotational platter hard drives, they used to go up to a terabyte, so we had a lot of room to put things. Today, the new laptops have these SSD drives in them, and they're starting at 128 gigs which basically, think of it like 128 cars in a garage. It's a lot, but not really. We used to have 1,000 cars in a garage. Well, the operating system takes up a good bit, get some photos and music, and now the, the computer's full. So what do you do? Well, you gotta get a bigger garage. So it costs a lot more money in the laptops to get to it. Usually the iMacs, when you buy them, their base uh, starting hard drive size is a terabyte, so it's a thousand room for 1,000 vehicles, so that's actually a lot of space. But when you get to a laptop, people have no idea what's filling up their space, there are utilities that actually make it very simple to say, hey, I got too much music, too much pictures, too much email, and actually can you know, clear it out for you pretty quickly. But I'm going to tell you, that's why I put it in red, always extra exercise caution when trying to use anyone else's utilities other than Apple's. Because they're really not needed, but you know, there might be a case you might say, hey, you know, I've got to do something to fix my little problem. Force empty trash. Sometimes, um, Give me an example, Mac Keeper, that little guy I told you about earlier. If he shows up in your computer, the first thing you're taught to do, would, if you see, you'll see this little ghost figure up in the corner of the screen and go, what the hell is that? Well, that's Mac Keeper if you click on it. Well, it sits in your applications folder. You literally can drag it and drop it in the trash can to delete it. Usually, by clicking empty trash with that program, it will start the automatic uninstall process and bring up the launch of web pages that say, why are you leaving us, you know, give us reasons. You know, they're trying to get you to stay and do more things. But when you go to hit the trash and try to empty it, sometimes it won't empty, now it's stuck. So next time the computer restarts, you can't do the trash. And you go, what the hell is going on? 
Well, just because part of the program is still running behind the scenes, while the main part of the program is now in the trash. So you go, well, how do I empty my trash? And there's actually a couple different commands you can do in the terminal app, which scares a lot of everybody in this room. It's basically getting into the underpinnings of Apple, a real simple command that actually force empties it. Or you can download a program like this for free, and you click on it to say, and it pops up and you just basically say, force empty my trash, and it says, you type in your password, and boom, the trash is gone. So it actually is very helpful, and it works for certain issues like that. But is again, I haven't read, just use it as a last resort. You know, if you, if you called me and, and, you know, or if you called George and they can't seem to solve it, this little program works great. So, nifty little device. Cleaning caches safely. Well, technically the way the computer works is when, it, when an application is running, like we'll say Safari or iTunes, behind the scenes is a temporary working set of files. And it's like a Rolodex. And every time the computer goes to load something new, before it does it, it wants to see if there's anything in place it's already existing, so it doesn't have to load so much. No big deal. But over time, that Rolodex gets you know, unwieldy, the cards ain't fitting in, now it's full of all this crap. Well, how do you clean it out? Well, normally, uh, there's some simple things you can do by running through your libraries, and a lot of people have done it by themselves, and George and Jerry have different ways of doing it too. But there are programs out there like Onyx, which actually, once you turn it on, you can click over to the maintenance section and say clean the cache. And you can say uh, user level, system level, and it'll give you warnings of you know, what's safe and not safe to do. And it actually helps keep the computer running kind of trim. Realistically, do you need to do it? No, not often. I mean, I've, I've had people had their computer three, four years before I've actually had to go thumb cache on their system. So it just let you know that there are tools out there that can help keep the computer running better. Um, but sometimes, usually when people are having issues with the, the performance and speed, it's usually the hard drive school. They put a big operating system like El Capitan on a computer that's from 2008. So you can't really speed it up or do things because you know, the computer can't take the uh, pressure of the new systems. This is actually a fun app, Daisy Disk. I like this little guy. Because I sometimes, um, give an example, with Super Duper or uh, Time Machine, these, these are backup programs. And one's by Apple, one's by uh, Shirt Pocket Corporation. They do a great job. There's Carbon Copy Clone and some other ones out there. Sometimes they create uh, temporary partitions to move data from one point to another. Well, sometimes those partitions get broken and then get kind of left allocated on their own. Well, all of a sudden, you may have a section that kind of grows like from here to here. And we have, this might be your iTunes library in yellow. This might be your pictures in green. And then over here, it'll tell you, you know, pictures, library, music, you know, and right down the list, it'll tell you how much space you have in each one, so you know what what of your stuff is taking up space on a hard drive. It also helps when you find things taking up space that shouldn't be there. <coughs> I have folks who have no games, no pictures, no music, no movies, and hard drives full. Here it was a, I somehow the time machine screwed up from backing up to an external drive, was backing up to an internal drive, the folder was invisible. This helped me locate it where I brought it back, threw it in the trash can and boom the hard drive is back to new again. So something simple like this, just, of all the apps we'll talk about, it's probably one of my favorite ones. It's simple and it's easy to look at and, and figure out what stuff is. It's actually kind of cool graphics. And it says show you unused things that you don't need or do you have to make judgments? No, yeah, that, that's judgments for you. At least you can okay. say, wow, I've got you know, a terabyte hard drive, i got 800 gigs of music. Okay. Maybe I actually did not put so much music on here. So that kind of thing. But at least you know what, what's filling up on the system. Because a lot of folks, when I say you got to take stuff off, they go, well, I got rid of all my recipes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a penny in the ocean that took anything away. Yeah. It didn't work. So if you're getting rid of video, if you get rid of pictures, you get rid of audio, things that take up the big space, the meat of it, then yes, even big apps like Adobe takes up a lot of stuff. Sometimes people say, well, you know, I'm, I know some other guys like Jerry and George would know. We've installed a ton of apps over the years. Okay? And then what happens is, the app either goes out of business and you just drive the app to the trash can, which is great. However, there's remnants left behind. But they're at the system level and the user folder, things you never go looking at. So sometimes someone says, well, it says I used up all the space in a drive, but I don't have anything on my computer. Well, it's tied up into <coughs> old parts of old different pieces of software. Well, App Zapper is actually a pretty cool app. Basically, a little window pops up and you can literally drag, for example, Mac Keeper onto App Zapper and it locates all the things App Zapper put in and then we'll put it to the trash can but also let you know before you delete what's going to be deleted. So it's actually a nice nifty device. Um, the only thing I, I, it is neat, but the only thing I don't like about it 
is I get a little leery when it comes to the Adobe stuff. Adobe has some of the most complicated installers out there, especially between cloud, CS5, CS6, all the different suites from Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign, a ton of different apps. Well, a lot of times they kind of cross into each other, so you don't want to be deleting a library out of InDesign that you might need for Illustrator and then have to reinstall all your stuff again, which is really a pain to do with these guys. So, it's a great utility, so if you don't have a whole lot of stuff on your system and you put something you don't want and say, hey, I just want to get out cleanly and safely, it's a neat little app to do it. Remember yeah. Can you ahead. tell it to uh, not do Adobe? Uh, there are things you can set up in there that there, there's a safe spot you can say keep these apps safe. So anything that relates to it, it'll say, okay, I won't touch that file because it may belong to Adobe. So it does have that feature there, which I do like. It's actually, it's got a good write-up. It's actually a very good app. I've used it a few times. Memory clean is kind of neat. Um, think of it this way. A lot, a lot of folks have like iMacs, big, you know, the big 21 inch iMac. They have four gigabytes of RAM on it, which back in 2009, it was a rocket ship. It was kick ass. I love the thing. Today, if you put out Capitan in it, which Apple allows you to install something that's six years, you know, in the past, put a new operating system on it. Well, it's like buying a Ford Pino and putting on a 40 foot trailer and pulling it to the Grand Canyon. It'll wow. get there, but it's going to take a long time. And we don't have that kind of time. So, which most people get suckered into being told is you need to update your operating system. Well, if you go from uh, Snow Leopard to Maverick, to Snow Leopard to El Capitan, it's a drastic change on the operating system. And then what happens is you find that everything's been slow, so now it says you're out of RAM memory. So that means you have to physically add more chips. It's the only way to get around this. But in the meantime, Somebody says, well, I really don't want to spend the money on a chip right now. I'm just going to buy a new computer in a year. Well, this little app will actually try to get rid of stuff that's not being used and add more memory back into the system. It actually works okay, but I don't like to use software to take the place of something we actually really physically need, which is hardware. So, and right now, RAM is so cheap, so if you have an old computer, like this one's five years old, you can literally put, like, I got like eight gigs in this thing, and it cost me like 40 bucks. So I went from four to eight. So RAM is really cheap now. It's getting to the point where we're not going to be able to update our RAM in these things because they're almost coming preset from the store as is. But most of the stuff I'm telling people now, if you're going to buy some, add the extra memory. It's cheaper to do it now. So if you've got 8 or 16 gigs, do it, or as much as you can afford because down the road, these things last. Apple's not like Windows. These things will be here five, six years. They're great devices. So you might as well build in for that extra operating system load coming down the, down the pipe as when the rails are required to start. One of the programs I use often is this one here called Visibility. I'll tell you why. Super duper, I love the backup app, but sometimes it gets to be a pain in my ass. I really, truly, truly mean it. And what happens is, how many use Super Duper? How many have seen Super Duper when they can't copy something, puts a big red thing up? Okay. Well, when I do that, uh, I'll give you an example. I updated, uh, I was testing out the Mac scan. It's, we'll talk about it later, but it's one of the uh, antiviruses on the computer. And so I was copying it from my main machine to my Drobo backup. Well, it says can't do it, disk is full, which is not true. So I look at it here, I have to actually remove it from my Drobo first before I can get it to come in as a permissions issue, but SuperDuper has an issue with it. The problem is the file I have to go get is invisible. So I'm like, well, this sucks. So it tells you where it is, but you just can't get to it. So I actually go put on my little app, click it, it makes everything that's invisible visible. I go find it, delete it, go back, click on it, say hide everything again, and it puts everything back the way it was. It's actually really cool. It's a cool little app. I love it. It works well. But I never thought I'd have to use as much as I do. That's it. For me, at least. Now you have companies out there that say, hey, guess what? We're a one-stop shop. Don't just buy this one, that one, this one. We can do it all. El Capitan Cash Cleaner. It's actually a pretty into little program. It looks just like that, wet and dry back. Um, it does everything from the maintenance scripts where it clears your caches. You can even tinker with some things under the hood if you don't like the way the dock looks or the menu bar. You can change a few things. Um, it does things where, let's see, disaster planning allows you to make a bootable uh, drive if you need to, but you can also do that with Apple Disk Utility. And it even has a built-in uh, antivirus. It has the CLAM uh, antivirus system built in. That's actually a free system that's out there, but they've incorporated it in their product. So it actually works well. But generally, as a whole, you know, I don't recommend these. If you want to spend a little bit more money, this is like the Cadillac of all the ones out there. Um, it's a real pretty interface. Looks sexy. You, know, you click on all the different things. It tells you system junk and iPhoto junk. The problem with apps like this, they work great if you know what you're doing. If you're installing your machine down. 
They don't, well, actually, the Clean My Mac does it. It annoys me, because even though I tell it not to activate itself, you know, I tell you I want to do it when I want to, just for giggles. It, every time I restart the computer, it pops up and says, uh, here, I've noticed some extra preferences, and I'm like, you know what? I want to control my machine, not, not that type of thing. But the problem with some of these apps that people understand is they go, well, I want to trim out, trim the garbage. I'm okay with that. The only problem is I have three hard drives plugged into my computer. Time machine runs. I use super duper and it backs up to two other machines. I actually have well, one to another, another one to this. So I basically have a three-way backup so no matter what happens, I'm covered somehow, some way. Well, with that said, if I ever do a search on my system and look up, example, clean my Mac, I'm going to find it in basically four locations. Three backups and the main computer. Well, if you click the duplicate button, which I know it has, it's going to show four different ones. You're like, well, I don't need four, I just need one. Well, now you start erasing your backups. And then all of a sudden, you're on a kid and go, well, how did that damn thing get back to four places? <laughs> so you're running it again. So basically, it's like Groundhog Day over and over. So, um, and it can screw you up, too, because sometimes people actually delete something they actually need. So I really just say, look, Apple doesn't make an app that we need to run all the time. So these are just out there to give an FYI. There's a whole bunch out there coming from me. You really don't need them. If you have a problem that some of the things we talked about, or you say, hey, I come across something, Call me. I don't charge for the phone calls. Just call me. I'll walk you through it or tell you what to do. I mean, the mug group here is an awesome resource in this town. Jerry, George, I mean, it's just phenomenal what these guys can do. Everyone in this class, I mean, this group has been great. So you get a lot of good resources here. This stuff is kind of overkill. It's kind of hard to break the PC people because a lot of them are switching into Apple now. And rather that, where do I defrag my hard drive? You don't have to. So these are things I, I can show you on my phone today. I actually do that out at the one of the colleges, they sent me today, go, oh, my computer's slow, but I need to defrag it or run the disk scan. I'm like, that's for Windows, Apple, you don't have to worry about it, restart it. He did, and the computer's fine. So, and sometimes if your computer's starting to run slow, it could be for good reason, it could be that the hard drive is starting to fail. So it's something to keep in mind. So don't ignore it and think, oh, maybe i got to get a disk utility to fix it. No, maybe there's something else going on. And that tends to happen too. The moment you've all been waiting for, so how many viruses do we have for Apple? Zero. 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 <laughs> guys, are you guys on the report? Guys are good. Yes, there are zero viruses from Apple, which is good. Now, will it stay that way? Mm, I'm not sure. I'll tell you why. There's a lot of a lot of intelligent folks out there, not just in our country, but around the world. Their goal is to hack all these operating systems. Every single one of them. And they're called the Black Hat Society. The little dude up there always sees glasses and a hat. And he's an insider. Uh, and there's a lot of people, and they're, they're also for the good, and they're also for the bad. There's no rhyme or reason why, but because someone says you can't go behind this wall, someone's going to find a way to get behind this wall. And that's just how it goes. Apple right now has over 1 billion devices deployed worldwide and growing. That's a lot. From a small niche company that said, you're never going to make it. Microsoft said, you just need to go away. Look where they are today, one of the largest entities in the world. There are no viruses in the wild, okay, uh, that affect the Apple OS, the iOS, the iPhones and iPads, the watches, or the TVs. However, malware is also not in the wild, but it usually comes contained in infected programs. And people said, well, how do I know my program's infected? How many here have actually, mm, we'll use words like procured or appropriated music or software off the internet illegally? You guys are all honest people. It's awesome. <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of services out there that are like uh, LimeWire, and they're all called Torrent websites. And basically, you can go to these sites and you can download full movies. I, I can tell you this, people pirate movies more than anything out there. Years and years ago, I'd say, hold on, say, hold on, now, he'd be 16. So when he was six over to daycare, I remember when Cars just came out from Pixar, the movie Cars, excellent movie. It was Thursday night. It doesn't come out till Friday, right? Friday night release. Thursday day, there's just, oh, pack a little extra something. We're going to have, uh, we're going to watch Cars. So I said, what, the movie? She said, yeah, we already have it. I'm like, hmm, you know, it comes out tomorrow. She says, no, we have a friend that works in the industry. We already got a copy of the movie on VHS. We're going to watch it tomorrow. I'm like, holy crap. So it's happened. And this is the big thing after people download stuff all the time. Not this thing. Nowadays, that was what they actually got put on the VHS, so nothing will affect there. But now, these are DVD players and our VHSs. Everything's being streamed. The moment you download, we'll say, you know, Cars and Pixar, 
Whoever put it on is available to you also add a little something, something extra to it. So now that you're running it on your system, because you willfully installed it, you gave it permission to be in there, now whatever that's running is now actually in the system. So if there's a Trojan horse, a bug, or a virus that can actually you know, cause more havoc in the system, it was put there not at Apple's fault because you actually broke or you went around it to put something in your system. And there's no way to know whether you've been infected or not. Um, and that's where we're going to talk about that ransom uh, malware program just come up. So the bottom line is, should we be selling these type of types of programs, anti-spywares and anti-malwares? Apple corporate, this is coming from Apple mothership itself in California <coughs> states, no. That's what they said. For now. Apple is very proactive. They have a next protect feature in their system that works behind the scenes. Apple's proactive. They're policing, they're closing doors, they have something called the gatekeeper. Apple is very good at what they do. I mean, I, I tell you what, look, the FBI can't get a damn iPhone. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That says enough about Apple in itself. So Microsoft can't say that. So I'm actually okay with that. But there's black hat hackers out there. These people are brilliant, they're genius. Let me tell you how, how I actually was, I'm actually uh, my brother-in-law. He worked for ASG. He was Art Allen's uh, lead software designer. The guy was brilliant. <coughs> I was dealing with a Windows 7 computer once with a client that somehow got screwed up with a virus, but the lady needed to get into her stuff. I called him on the phone. He took me into a place in the underpinnings of window machines I've never seen before. I see lines and lines and lines of code, stuff that's all Greek to me. And he goes, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Let me know when you see line zero zero that backslash on the bottom. Like, all these little characters, and I get across and I go, I think I'm there. He goes, good. Now, put the cursor here, erase this many, type this in. Okay, go down some more. We rebuilt Windows in about 20 minutes. That sucker started up like it was brand new. I'm thinking, this is coming off the top of this guy's head over the phone. So, there are, I don't think that way, but people think that way. I think on the user side, I'm on this side of the Apple, or Windows, or everyone else, these guys are behind the scenes. It's amazing what they can create. Some great minds out there. Unfortunately, they're out there to invoke panic, right? Malicious intent. Others are just, hey, look, man, I just want to lock my phone so I can have it do something totally different. One of the biggest gripes that people have with Apple that I hear from folks is, why do I have to buy everything to Apple iTunes Store? Why can't I get it from Amazon or something I got at the library? I mean, there's different ways to get music, and some of it's copy protected. There's rules. Well, they want to bypass those rules. <coughs> so Apple doesn't provide that. Apple has a rule of thumb, which I really like, which Windows doesn't adopt. When they make this phone in the operating system, they said, well, this is going to go out to a lot of people. It has to be perfect. I love Steve Jobs the way he thought. It had to be perfect. Because if this thing crashed and burned, that's why there was never Flash running on this device. Okay, Flash is a little video, audio and video player you see, you know, putting on the web pages with all the content. Actually, almost 90% of all the crashes on the web surfing, Mac and Windows is due to a Flash issue. Steve Jobs said, death the Flash, it won't be on our devices. Well, here we are today. Flash is going to be redone, and it's going to be one of some different software. It's not needed anymore. But it, because what Flash did was they had to work in the engine room. It had to be under, under the behind the scenes to make it work. Well, Apple didn't let anybody in the engine room because if that happens, it shuts or freezes the phone, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to blame Apple and say, this thing sucks. Not blame Adobe, the software caused the problem, but you're blaming Apple. So Apple says, you know what? We're going to be responsible for making everything work, and then if you want to write software for Apple, they give you the tools to be a software developer. And when you hand them in your idea for whatever your app you're creating, they check your homework, they f whatever the errors are, they tell you to fix and correct. And then when they get the blessing, now your thing's being sold in the store. So Apple does it really a good way, not just from in-house designers and uh, software guys, but also to the people who, like us in the room here, if you want to create an app for the mug group and put it on the phone, we have the tools to do it, and Apple will help us get there. So it's actually pretty cool. But if we have to put, if you guys feel like, i got to have something on my machine, the only one I'm going to recommend, personally, the only one to recommend is Sophos. They've been around a long time. They're actually a very good company. How's the best part? It's free. So it's actually pretty good. Um, most colleges and universities around the country actually deploy Sophos. It's a very good, very good stuff. It's not too intrusive on your system. Part of the reason... Apple doesn't require it because when you put in like Norton Utilities, they want to check a million different things. So basically, if your processor is at 1% normally just sitting idle, that sucker might be at 32% at idle because all the antivirus stuff is running nuts behind the scenes. Since there's no really bugs for the Apple, 
what kind of protection are you building against? So, you, you know, that's the other thing. You can have antivirus, but if there's nothing to go to war with, then what, what do you got an arsenal for? Because you don't know what you're going to meet on the other side of the fence. You know, if I got a BB gun, is it an Abrams tank on the other side? You know, we don't know what's going to be there yet. And even with Windows, you know, most of these antiviruses are only effective against a resi resident known virus, okay? Anything new that comes out tonight or tomorrow, these programs aren't going to know what it is yet to correct it. Now, sometimes they get, they get preemptive uh, things where they're ready for it, but most of the time they don't. So people get infected, they figure out what the infection is, they send a bug, you know, updater out, then you can, you know, battle and hope that you don't get it from that point on. But realistically, we don't know what we're going to encounter. So other than what I mentioned earlier, if you've got a, a friend with a Windows computer, sent you a virus latent file in the email, and you just, you know, there's a joke, and you say, oh, whatever, I'll send it over to my buddy. They got Windows, they get the virus. Dennis, I think I heard you say it, but I want to ask it. Surface is not running all the time. It runs all the time, but it's very, it's not as memory intensive. It's real basic. It's actually just real simple. It doesn't do a whole lot to create the other ones do. Does it, is it, is it, it's much less than Norton? Less, much less, much less impact on the operating system okay. compared to Norton. Norton, McAfee, um, Kapersky, which Best Buy loves to sell everybody buys an Apple there. Um, Enod is another one. There's a, I mean, listen, there's probably, an ABG is a free one. Stay, other than this, because Apple doesn't have any issues, this, these disc companies make it available, it's good stuff. Uh, most free stuff on the Windows side is garbage. If it's free, for a reason, that means you have to manually run, run it. You want something that's going to run full time. So a lot of people go, oh, I got an antivirus on my system. Well, on Windows, they got a virus. Well, it's not running full time. So now you still, you still have to run it, and now you're in trouble. This is actually pretty decent, uh, so I have no problem with them. But the best part is it's free. The company's uh, very proactive. They've been around a long time. At the universities and stuff, actually Apple recommends it with them. But Apple doesn't have any antivirus stuff that they sell in their store. How many know what ransomware is? Uh, technically, this is considered the first true ransomware one. File Coder was one, I think, a couple years ago. It never was fully uh, finished, the people who actually created it. They had the concept of ransomware, never fully deployed. Then once they figured out what was going to happen, they actually built security against it, so it never really came to fruition. But So they gave this one to Key Ranger, that's its title. It came to just come up March 4th, so we're not too far into the month. Uh, this is the first one to come out there. Now, does that mean you have to run home and put Sophos on your system? No. What this is, is remember I mentioned earlier people go and steal music and movies and videos and books and stuff off the internet? Well, this is a program that makes that happen. It's called Transmission. It goes to what they call a torrent website. So if I want to pirate, let's just say, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, I want all three movies. Well, I go to a website and search for them and I'll find it and it comes in a bit of this little tag. When I click on the tag, it's, it opens up this application and the screen pops up and says, Pirates of the Caribbean, blah, blah, blah. It might say, you know, 20 gigs for a download process. Now that thing is now coming into my machine to go look for other stuff. And basically, it's a manager to download files for free, or they call leeching, you're stealing stuff off the internet. Well, what they did was the, the company, they're not sure what happened, but they think maybe their website was compromised, the guys who actually sell this product. It's actually a pretty safe product for what it does. However, uh, somebody hacked it, and what it did was it takes over a little uh, a certificate, which allows them to, to run in here, and it bypassed Apple's gate. You know, especially security system. So once they figured it out, they actually, I mean, within, on March 4th, the same day it came out, they revoked the security certificate, buttoned up the system for Gatekeeper, they have a, their Xprotect uh, antivirus signature, fixed it, uh, Transmission put an update out to their system within hours. So basically, it was there, it came out, but it only affected about 6,500 systems. Did it actually get to do anything? We don't know. But generally, these, most of these folks who got infected are not here. They're usually in Russia. Russia has the biggest cyber crime organization in the world. That's just where it all comes out of. But people here, you know, everybody likes to get stuff for free. It's what happens. So, but Apple, I mean, look, it's March 4th. It's took care of it on March 4th. It's all very proactive. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be that easy next time, but, you know, Apple's watching just like everybody else is. How many want to do something different with your iPhone? Does anybody ever jailbroken a device? All that means is um, basically instead of having the Apple um, uh, iOS operating system, people want to change it with some, this one's called uh, Pangu jailbreak. So basically that shows up on your phone, that's the operating system. And it allows you to do different things. You can do different 
You can put different screensavers in. You can have animated movies as your background. I don't know, it's night and day what you can do with these things. You can probably download illegal stuff without even having to install it. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's a whole big, uh, whole other world out there. Really, the, the internet itself, 10% is for the good. Everything else is for the bad. From pornography to the, the deep, dark, underground internet is unfreaking real. I mean, it, it, just to be down there is scared crap out of you. I've been in a few places I didn't even know existed, but they're there. A lot of stuff hovers under the radar. Google doesn't even get to half the stuff that's out there. It can't. The search engines, I think, I forget what it is, but I think they only reach like 20-25% of all actual content on the web. So that's a lot of crap we're looking at in Google's results, so imagine what it's not getting. There's a lot out there. Plus people hide, they're smart, they can get past you know, the thing searching for them. Um, the only problem is, I'll tell some things, really you do not want to jailbreak your device. Here's the five reasons why. You can read this stuff later. Um, you can't do it with anything, everybody here probably has 9.221 on their iPhones and iPads. Um, this only works with 9.1 uh, only, so otherwise if you've already been updated you can't actually go back and do this. So it's going to be very few people. However, Pangu recently says they, in the next release with 9.3 coming out, they're actually going to have a uh, hack for it. We'll see if it comes to truth, but we'll see. But the reasons why not to do it, A1, uh, it breaks your device. So if you somehow don't do it the right way, it's a break. It's all it's worth. You can't get anything else out of it. So you can actually hurt your device. Um, the data sucks. So behind the scenes, it might be killing your Wi-Fi, or if you have uh, certain plans with your cell providers like AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint, it might be sucking down enough, start getting overages and charges for it. So you don't know what it's doing behind the scenes. Or your warranty. So keep in mind, usually full of bugs, and it's always a security concern. So once you put this in your system and you start running it, how do we know somebody else isn't sucking all the data out of your phone under their servers? So you just don't know. So I, I, my bottom line says don't do it. I don't think anybody in this room would do it, but it's just one of those things to keep in mind. People just want to try something different. Hey, it's tax season, right? <laughs> should be worried. Should be worried now, or should you be worried back in August last year? August of last year. Here's the reason why. If you, even though some of the stuff, I mean, how many people seen a scam email from the IRS? Or something close to it, anybody? Okay. Sometimes they may have some information on it, or you may get a letter that might say, be fake. Even if you're not sure, still contact the IRS or let a CPA that you trust know. Because if you kind of avoid it, what happens is, as a taxpayer, you're legally responsible for what is in your tax return, okay? whether you prepared it or not. So if somebody's filed a return in December, okay, for this for last year, you're not going to do it until April 15th because hey, I'll wait till last minute. Someone else has already got your check. So by the time you do it, now we've got a big, it's already a couple months in and we're responsible for that. And you're like, hey, I didn't know. But they're putting more of the responsibility on us these days. So we have to be proactive. I'm not saying what you see all the time should make you, you know, run for the moon, but you really should be proactive. And this is the biggest scam, especially in Florida. They actually give us a little more leeway. I think Florida, Georgia, and Washington, D.C. That's it, Georgia, Washington, D.C. Thanks, Jerry. And there are two other states, or three states that are really big into this, where it's, it's prominent. Um, the IRS knows about it. They were actually giving people, you were able to sign up for the uh, uh, a PIN ID. Oh, apparently that server got compromised. You know, the government went after the lowest bid, and so the server that should provide the safety pins was compromised. So there you go. Uh, but whatever you can do, just be, you know, be vigilant. You know, look at your credit report often, okay? Look at your tax records. Look at everything like, you know, poor Vicky, you know, she, apparently she, someone's enjoying Italy right now and she's not on her credit card. So these things happen. It's only going to get worse. Apple is a very safe operating system, but someday we're going to get ding dong with something. It's a matter of time, okay? Is it that time yet? I don't know, but I tell you what, I'm getting, I'm seeing more and more of this every week. And it's, it's and they're calling on the phones, they're sending emails. The biggest problem people are seeing now are the web pages, the pop ups. And that's a big issue. So, before I get to that point, uh, avoid Mac Keeper, get him out of here. This guy is not friendly. That's the face you'll see up in the top any bar to the black. If you see that, you know he's in your system. He's up here at the date and time. The left hand side, I don't know, right hand side. How many have LifeLock? Get your money back. <laughs> You've just entrusted a stranger with all your information. Sports Illustrated. How many familiar with Sports Illustrated guys? Let me see the division, right? Listen, 
Sports Illustrated. George and I watched Muhammad Ali and George Frazier fight tonight, right? A month from now, the magazine comes out covering the Ali Frazier fight. Well, it's already after the fact. We already saw it. Why do I care about the magazine a month later? Life walks the same way. We have to give them a lot of information to monitor all our stuff, right? So now we're giving this basic an entity who says we're there for you, taken hopefully. But remember, it's a human being the other side of the phone you're giving information to. So now they set up your system. Capital One already sent Vicky notification. Well, Capital One is going to see the charge first. It's running through their server, right? They're thinking, Vicky, by the way, we've got a problem. Life walks and go, hey, Vicky, there's a problem with your credit card. You're like, I already know Capital One told me. True statement. So why pay for something that's already after the fact? Most of your banks, most of your credit card companies, investment houses, they're trying to keep your money safe and keep you happy because this is going to be an ongoing thing from here on out. It's a long way won't be right. LifeLock makes a lot of promises. The reason why they fall short is they don't do what they say they're going to do. See, they say, well, we have a million dollar policy. If uh, you compromise, then we will help you through it. Sure they will. Oh, you got a problem, sir? Hang on. Big Paolo. These are all the forms you need to fill out and all the stuff you need to do to get your identity back. Have a nice day. We gave you what you need. Oh, I'm not going to help you. That's all right there for you. That's what LifeLock does. Not a good thing. If you ever listen to Carrie Kersky talk, she's anti-life walk as well. And she's the guru of all this stuff. So it's a nice idea. We're all looking for an easy way out. Oh, these guys are great. No, they're not. So stick with this. There's actually on a lot of websites now for your credit card companies, you can opt into things like notify me when I'm my uh, payments due. Notify me if you know this is out of my area. Notify me this, that, and the other. It's actually pretty cool. So we just have to be proactive now. It's more than we've ever had to do in our lives. Um, some of you might want to check too if your credit card has an app. That's how I call mine, like within 20 minutes, because I have a Capital One app and I get an alert anytime there's any charge on my card. And actually, for me, last year, well, every six months with Regents Bank, I'm going to have to do some of these guys, but every six months I get some kind of compromise with you know, something that happens in my account. Well, I was looking at my account, I saw some uh, grocery stores in England being oh. some stuff, small purchases. So I called Regents, I, I know the girls at seven have been working all day in the fraud department. I know all seven. Got the one girl that said, hey, it's me again, you probably don't remember, but blah, blah, blah. She goes, how do you know it's fraud? I'm looking at my statement. She's like, she's like, well, we have to wait and see. No, I'm already going to start. So I went downtown, filled out some paperwork, got the affidavit started. Then they let me know a little bit later that day. But by the way, we've been compromised. I have our good care. So I was ahead of them. Some companies like Capital One, have a very good proactive system because they're a big, big ass company. Regions Bank's a small bank. They don't have what Bank of America or Chase has in place or Wells Fargo, which is huge. So smaller banks are cute and quaint, you know, friendly handshake service. But when it comes to, you know, what's going to happen with your money afterwards, it's a whole other story. So um, this is big. I can tell you in the last month and a half, this has been chaos. People are getting brazen. They're calling on the phone. I got my first phone call, actually, a couple of phone calls, and a guy goes, uh, hello, sir. You back infecting the internet hey, with your computer? Hey, hey, hey. I, I must get in your Microsoft computer. So day one, I said, I got a Mac. No, no, you don't understand. I said, click, and I hung up. <laughs> well, that was on a Friday. So Saturday morning, about 10 o'clock, I'm sitting in front of the computer, ready to go for breakfast. We've got the wife, two kids, we're sitting there. Phone rings. I saw the number again. He gets on, sir, you're back infecting the internet. And he told me his name, and I'm like, Apu, it's me, Bob, look over here, wave at you, look. I hear the guy standing up in his cubicle, such flying everywhere. I'm like, look, it was Will Eisen, you call in the house, wrong number, look, I hear him. I can see this guy, like, I don't see you, it's your wrong number, hang up. So he hung up, and the kids are just laughing and asking him. I said, look, if I'm going to answer the phone, I'm going to have to tell with these folks. Okay? But I'm actually laughing because my clients have always gotten these things, I never did. Well, now I'm getting them. So that's just over the home phone, which we never used. Well, they can call your cell phone now as well. Well, I just was introduced to somebody recently, and she fell for the phone scam recently, and she let the person in the computer, okay, about six hundred thirty some dollars they siphoned out of her account, okay, because they sold her a bill of goods. It's, oh, but they put in four different ways for them to come and go. They set up a virtual private network, which means they can come back in anytime they choose. It's a little tunnel with a secret back and forth. They've, uh, some companies will do a recurring charge, so every month they ding you for 100, 200 bucks without you doing anything. That was a little nice of that, party um, So, and then they install a whole bunch of programs she didn't need in her system and they charge her for it. Like years, a couple years subscription. 
So what I've been doing lately is I've been dealing with that, calling a credit card company, getting a card canceled, trying to get their money back, and I've actually been the one having to fill out the affidavits for my clients just so they actually believe it. Because they're not going to believe you folks, because once you talk to somebody and say, go ahead and give them a credit card, they already say, you gave them the information, you already okayed it, you can't kind of go back on that. Where I get to come in the plan and say, look, they were, they were taken advantage of. So at least for now, they're believing me. So I can at least help you know, some folks out get their money back. Um, and that's just them calling on the phone. They're doing it with pop-ups. Now, even on Apple computers, Apples don't have issues, but if you're surfing the web, how many use Facebook? Probably 90% of the room. Facebook, you can click on something, look at a link of family, friends, or just read some article, wherever you end up. Well, you'll get a pop-up on the screen. It might say, hey, call this number. You've been infected. Well, and it makes noise, and people get scared. So what do they do? They call the number. You have an apple. You're not infected. It's just you just need, you may now Safari might freeze, or Firefox, or Google Chrome, whatever you're using to get on the web, it might freeze. Worst case scenario, yank the plug on the computer, plug it back in, restart it, go back to Safari or whatever one you're using. It should work fine. It really should. Um, but don't call the number on the screen because they're going to tell you they're Apple support or Microsoft support, which they are not, and they're going to start getting into your system and then doing things. For those of you who are in the discussion group. I put it out in the email today, a report on the process for breaking the, when your browser is frozen and then you got the thing, read it, because it gives you, it gives you the step-by-step -step process to recover, your, to get your, your, your computer back. Control your browser back, absolutely. And there's several different ways to do it, I'm glad you did that, thanks, Jerry, it's a big deal. But that's becoming more and more. These are conversations we not had years ago, right guys? We didn't talk about this stuff, but it's getting worse because everyone's out there for your money, they're looking for the easy, because we're all suckers, most people are not computer people, but now we're all walking around. I remember what, three years ago, when uh, four years ago when the iPads were, the iPhones were just all the rage, and I remember sitting here and a few of the older folks were like, oh, these kids, these damn devices, you know, nobody, you know, they're always FaceTime these things, not me, you know, we still talk and play cards and blah, blah, blah. And I remember giving a lecture sometime later, and everyone I walked in the room had their heads down looking at their devices, like, uh -huh. <laughs> So we're all victim of it now, but you know, we can't part with these things. I mean, these are part of us now, which is pretty sad. Dennis, I just got a note that said LifeLock is being sued because of... Yes, that. false practices. Yeah, yeah. False practices. And they are. So it's just one of those things that, you know, it's a nice idea. I like the concept. They just fell short on what, what they're selling. But to me, it's after the fact. <laughs> so doesn't the app one blocker prevent these pop-ups? Not necessarily. You have to understand. For every wall, someone says, well, that's the wall. I need to get over that wall. So you, these hackers out there, they already know what's already in place. They know what, if you have Norton Utilities, they know how to disable it. If you got, well, uh, example, let's see, some other programs like uh, Sophos I told you about. They, if you're running it, they know how to get past it. So every time there's something to stop something, someone else knows how to get around it. It's a cat and mouse game. One minute we're winning, the next minute they are. So it's, it's very frustrating. It really is. Does anybody have any questions? This is kind of a quick talk tonight. There's more just to kind of give you an FYI about, I don't think you absolutely need to have a, an antivirus or anti-spyware at all, but down the road we may. I mean, Apple is very proactive, so I'd stick with that. You don't have to use any of the utility programs I talked about. It's just kind of give you an FYI. There are things out there in case you get stuck. But as a whole, Apple is a pretty rock solid system. I've been happy with, you know, ever since they made their changes, you know, they've really made their system refined well. It's only gonna get better. Uh, but just remember, we're also dealing with an entity that wants to break everything, so that makes it hard too. Especially when most folks are scared into getting into something new, you know, or never been around a computer before, an iPad. Now the grandparents, the kids are buying it for them and they're using them, but now you have somebody trying to break into their device. That's a whole other element that no one's even ready for. So, but it's coming. Uh, earlier this week, or maybe it's late last week, I guess, I got an email about a ransomware, mm -hmm. and that. Uh, Within the ransomware, somehow it said something, or reported, it was a report of ransomware, and malware bytes was recommended as a solution to Yes, that. and that, that's on my thing. Malware and bytes. you had that. I have it on there, but the thing is, hit me, if you don't play in dark, bad places, you don't have to have that product. The people who are stealing software and music and movies, they have that stuff to put all throughout Mac and Windows computers because they're playing in places they ain't supposed to be. Should, Should I really get rid of it? Huh? Should I get rid of malware by it? No. 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 I mean, it, you, you've got it. It's, it's a good program. It's a good program. They update, they update the, the, the threats 
Regularly, so run it once in a while. Yeah, it's not going to hurt I actually, I don't need, there's only three I recommend. And for me, anybody who has a Windows based computer, whether it's home or business, I use Viper, which is up on my screen, you know, several slides back. I use Viper for the antivirus, and I use Malwarebytes anti malware for the malware threats. And on the Mac side, if somebody has to have it, or I got students going to college, we put the Sophos on it because it, it works really well. So between those three, that's what I recommend right now. They're actually very good products. I didn't say Norton, I didn't say McAfee, I didn't say Avast, I didn't say any of those. They're on my screen, but they're just not very good programs to work with. What does yeah. Malwarebytes get rid of MacKeeper? Uh, no, because MacKeeper technically is a legal piece, of, I mean, how do you want to put it? It's legal utility software, but it doesn't doesn't work as advertised. It actually gives a false sense. So because you, it's a, it's a legitimate company, uh, it's just recommended, like they're under court order to actually give people money back. So I think it was a like $28 million lawsuit against them because they're, it's just like LifeLock, they're selling you bill of goods. What MacKeeper does behind the scenes, you have a user account. Everybody has an account on your computer, Mac and Windows, it doesn't matter. But if you have an account on your computer, you know, whatever it is, MacKeeper creates a shadow profile of your account. So all of a sudden, they're both running in sync together, and then one morning you go to click on your email, you can't get to it. You go to click on your files, they won't open. iTunes gives you an error. All of a sudden, conveniently, boom, Mac Keeper pops up. Well, madam, sir, we've just detected 18 million viruses on your system, and this, that, and the other. You go, oh my god, I got the book form somewhere. <laughs> Call this number. So you do. What they say, oh, thank god you called us, so we can help you. Like, well, thanks. So they log into your system. All they do is they reset the shadow profile, and while they're working with you, they even nice enough to put a little thing up on screen. This is Wikipedia. This is the bug you have. Check it out. While you're reading that, I'm going to be fixing this. So it's a real interactive thing. So now you think you got this friend from India, right, who says he's not. His name's Bob, of course. But that's who you're working with. And at the end of the day, he resets the turkey timer. You can get access to all your files. You're handing him your credit card. He's like, thank you very much. Short time later, boom, thing pops up again. Well, I'm calling those guys back. They were great. When in reality, is they're actually locking your system up and collecting money for it at the same time. Isn't that nice of them? How do you get rid of it? Drag it to the trash can and empty your trash. That's it? That's it for now. And then you'll see the browser will pop up to say, why are you getting rid of us? I, don't even, I just closed the browser. Don't even answer any other questions. You don't have to. Okay. Here's the fact that people were downloading things illegally. The reason why... Apple has no longer put on their um, desktop or laptops on a flat that's lots of drives. No. What's um, the reason? No. The reason why floppy drives and CD drives have gone off all Apple's devices is because mm -hmm. everything's being streamed now. So there's no reason to have DVDs or CDs. No one's burning them anymore. I was a DJ for 30 some years. I went kicking and screaming from vinyl to CDs. Now I got everything on, on CDs. Now they're like, well, you got to put it in your computer. I'm like, what? Well, that's a lot of crap to go from vinyl to CD and now get all that on some kind of file. It's a pain. But it's much easier now because with the, the cameras like George is taking a video with, that can be dropped into a computer quick and then uploaded to YouTube or made to be put on one of these devices and shared. You don't even have to burn a CD, DVD anymore. They're actually becoming obsolete in the systems. Plus, they're limited on what their size and what they can actually hold. Do you use an ad blocker? No, I don't use any of those. I like to see, honestly, for me, I like to see what's out there because you know, I'm, I'm a user just like you guys are. And I'm actually in places, and I'm actually, I, I actually make my Apple get into trouble so I can figure out, you know, just something someone else is going to have happen to them. So, you know, I'm the doctor that tries to get infected and then fix it while I'm at it. So, kind of crazy. Go ahead. Uh, I try to avoid using public Wi-Fi's but I'm finding myself, uh, at least at one time, where I was in a location where I was checking my iPhone and I saw that without me actually initiating it, I was um, automatically connected to the wide that public area's Wi-Fi. Well, is that because of location services maybe or Wi-Fi? Well, it's because you're, if your Wi-Fi is on your phone, like some people, at least for me, when I'm here with you guys right now, my Wi-Fi and my Bluetooth are off. My, my, my Wi-Fi Because they, they eat battery time. Because right now they'll be sniffing around for something to connect to it or something to connect to. My Wi-Fi is off. The only, the only, it may have gotten bumped because what happens is it finds an open network if it's running and it just connects to it. I've gone down 41 where this thing be sitting on the console of the car and I can see trying to connect to, example, like Rich Carlton, Pelican Bay, something or other. As you go down 41, it's looking for a Wi Fi mm -hmm. hotspot and it may find some. It doesn't mean you can actually connect to them, but you know, they are broadcasting far enough in so many places that 
they'll, they'll show up as an but ID. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're connected, even though it shows. Right. It shows certainly what's available if the Wi-Fi is on, but it may not be connected. Now, if it's an empty, like give an example where people are having a problem is at home. Um, if how many, everybody has Comcast, uh, Xfinity has this new Xfinity Wi-Fi as part of their modem. So let's just say you have uh, a, um, Comcast at home and you go visit some kids in New York and they have Comcast. You, if you don't know the, the password to the router, all of a sudden you're going to see underneath their router name, you're going to see Xfinity Wi-Fi. If you click on that, it allows you to connect, okay, with your username and password from Naples because Comcast is universal throughout the country. Well, everywhere you go, as long as there's an Xfinity Wi-Fi, your phone or your iPad or computer are not going to lock onto that. So eventually you'll just say, forget the network. Otherwise, it's going to look for it automatically. Because I had a guy in the house go, well, gee, I can't seem to print to my printer. Well, you're two parts of your modem. You're connected to the Xfinity Wi-Fi spot, not your actual hotspot. So you're actually missing the wrong part of your network. So you're bypassing it. Yeah, this is not giving me the options of what I can access to that. It shows that I'm connected to that particular Wi-Fi. Well, well, it may somehow must have locked on, so it may have been the only one available, or you must have, you must have clicked, on, clicked on the one app that actually connected through it. Okay. Just, so I just turned the Wi-Fi off, so all you got to do. Yeah, well, that's what I do. But it still makes me think that every time The personal hotspots, like it, it does place, it's not only too concerned, unless you have a Windows computer. Yeah, I know what you mean. I just, just turn them off. It's not going to hurt anything. The iPad and iPhone, like I said, are pretty safe. It's the Windows devices with the Androids. The Android phones, they get viruses and, and spyware. So... I'm glad I don't have one of those ones. So Apple, excuse me, but the Apple as well as other good things with respect to security and uh, safe it's well. also good with this, what, protecting Wi-Fi when you're in public places. For the most part because there's not been any hacks into the Apple operating system okay. the Wi-Fi network. Yeah. That. It, not that it's not possible, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I've probably heard lots of horror stories. I have a PC emulator that I use once a week or so. Sure. With and since I'm operating a PC, could that infect my Apple? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially with the ransomware. Um, last time I talked, you weren't here for the lecture. There's, besides what you just saw here, which is very, uh, how do you want to say, it was kind of sandbox for that incident. There's a um, crypto wall is a, is a international running ransomware program out there on the web. It's vicious. The, the version 4 just came out just before Christmas. And I actually have a business downtown that actually got all six machines and took out 20 years of uh, data and encrypted every bit of it. And you can, there's nothing you can do, you can't pay, there's nothing you can't go in person, nothing you can do to get your data back, it's just gone. If you are running Windows on your Mac, which you absolutely can do, whether you're running using VirtualBox, Parallels, or Fusion. Parallels. Yeah, it's a great program. If you're running on Windows on Apple, first thing I do is unshare the uh, Apple side and Windows side together. I use the documents on the Windows computer only in the Windows partition and my Apple Docs are separate. I don't share them at all. Normally to make everything easier so that everybody has their stuff in one spot, uh, by default, usually with those products, when you turn them on, they want to share all your downloads and documents and desktops. That's great, but if the ransomware comes in on the PC and infects it, it treats the Apple the same way and it'll lock out all your Apple stuff as well because it's universal Docs. So, I would just say unshare that and that's good. But also, because you're running Windows, you better have antivirus like Viper or Nort or somebody, and uh, you have to have the anti spyware not spyware for malware bytes. That's got to be running on the PC full time. Not the free stuff, you got to pay for it. Well, I have a question about using the Wi Fi when like you're overseas. Well, that's a good question. Is anything safe overseas? I can say if I have an Apple product, I feel much safer than anything else I you know. Um, but like at hotels, you know, because you go stay at a hotel, you know, to, in order to use your a Wi-Fi. I, I would say for the most part they are pretty safe. I mean, like I said, there's no exploits in Apple's system. But if you have to type into some virtual private network to get on someone's device, that's a whole other story. Um, I mean, give you an example. I mean, my have clients around the world, not just in Naples. I mean, I, I, one of my Rotarian friends, he took a trip. I thought he was going to Napa Valley. He actually was in... Um, uh, just outside of Paris. But he was just in Paris. He called me, yeah, my Outlook's not working. He's running Outlook for on the Mac. So I logged in. So I'm on the cell phone with him. I logged in from my computer to his computer. And we're in, we're in basically just outside of Paris. And just like that, I went in, fixed his computer, and I got out. So you can be anywhere in the world at any time. I think for the most part, Wi Fis are safe, but again, know where you're at. Yeah. What about if you have, have your own VPN? If you have your own virtual private tunnel, that's fine because it's virtualized. 
Right. But I would, in, in the country I feel safer, outside the country maybe not so much, because I don't know what, 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 is, what servers you're running through on the other side. It's a little scary. Mm -hmm. But it should be safe. I mean, that's what most of the is for. A long time ago, I put Word onto my Apple. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess it was Word for Apple or whatever. Microsoft Word for Apple. Is that the same problem? No. 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 And actually, believe it or not, the 2016 version of Word is more like its Windows counterpart. It's actually a pretty decent program, and they're updating it daily. Microsoft right now is going to open up. They're going to be like Eastman Kodak. They may not be around much longer. And yeah. it's going to be hard for someone to say that. But Apple has done something no one else has done before. They went from this tiny little company to being a worldwide sensation, and they're there. And a lot of people are moving to the Apple platform. Google is the other shaker in the uh, whole organization. Google, now the Alphabet company, they had to change the name. Google's a subsidiary of Alphabet. But what they're doing is, they're, they own the Android operating system, which powers a lot of the Android phones, which is a dominant force. They're also working on the an Android desktop system, so when that gets here, you'll be able to buy a Dell or HP and say, do I want Windows or do I want Android? And you're going to see people start the mass exodus from Windows because Windows has had problems for so many years. Hmm. They, they just never went ahead with their operating system. Windows 10 has got some nifty features in it, but it's still technically, you can open up a command prompt and you got DOS under the hood, so really, you didn't get much further than where you're at already, so. Should I sell my Microsoft stock? <laughs> no, there's no big force, but I, I would just say, you know, keep in mind, watch it. Do you have any confidence in Wi-Fi monitors like uh, Thing or Wi-Fi Guard? Um, well, those things, I mean, they, they help you find networks. You know, a thing tells you what's on and who's on the network no. and what devices. But see, what scares a lot of people is they don't realize what's on a network. Give you an example I was talking about earlier. I went to a guy's house. He goes, I can't get my damn Wi-Fi. What the hell? Centrelink was green as it like, oh, it should be on. He goes, it connected to his own Wi-Fi. Somehow he got connected to a Honeywell thermostat, which was somewhere in, in, in the building. And actually, it came up on a screen. He was in it. He said, look, these things walk down. I said, that's the temperature, sir. I don't know what you're doing. But, so I got that fixed, but I, I literally put it, uh, uh, told George, I was down at Port Royal, I took somebody's LG refrigerator, it actually has a TV and Wi-Fi in the, the TV, or in the fridge, and had it connected to one network. So now we have, we have our thermostats on the network, we've got our TVs on the network, we got our refrigerators on the network, and we have more stuff being connected. The problem with thing, it shows you everybody on the network. Someone might see someone and say, well, I don't know why that's here, and then, you know, cut something out of their list that actually is connected to their network. It's an evil device, but I, mean, I, I use it like when, for me, if I go into someone's house in Port Royal, they got five different Wi-Fi repeaters, they're covering 10,000 square feet, I can see what all is connected around me so I know what, what's working and what's not. That's what I use it for. Hey Dennis, what about uh, one password? Do you have any more confidence in that than you did say a year ago? No, because I've, I've look, I hate to say it, we're all getting older, right? And I've had two clients now with mental issues as they get older, just not remembering things. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's one, two, three, four, and you can't remember one, two, three, four, you're still not getting into your device. You know, it's one password, unless it's written down somewhere, but people people do things, and if you're not with it, you change it, and then they'll remember what it is the next day. I mean, one of my friend's kids, he called a guy from last night at 11.30, he goes, hey man, can I get into an iPhone if uh, they change the password? I said, well, what happened? He goes, well, Jaden, she put 15 characters and he was showing off for the girls so they could recall oh, yeah. 15 characters. That was cool. Yeah, he did. It was really neat. This morning, he can't remember what the sequence was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, now you got a brick. <laughs> so these things happen. Um, I don't know. I, it's a good program. I think 1Password's got some nice ideas to it. Again, we're all looking for that easy way to do things. You know, LifeLock's got this, 1Password's got that. I don't know. I personally don't like to do that because... Um, I'm just afraid if something happens, I can't get it or someone else can't get into it. And you know, nowadays, even they go far beyond just being a computer guy, I've been power attorney for some estates because when people pass on, they go, well, you worked on this computer, get in there, let's see what's going on. So, and now that people are adding me to the will to make sure I come in and get a computer, have their password so the next of kin can get into doing whatever. It's getting, the computer's getting a pain in my ass. Dennis, what are you doing then if you're not using one password? I kind of do it the old-fashioned way. I actually have a Word document that's uh, a secure doc that I made for myself, and I update, and I put everything in it, because a lot of people don't remember what they've done. I actually put in an example like Capital One, 
know, the 800 number, I put in a website, I put in username and password, I put the date it was on there. And let's just say I have to change the password, I put, you know, changed as of this date, so I can say, oh yeah, I did change it last week, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I put everything in there, plus the account information, my wife's, I got a hard copy, it goes in the safe, one goes in the bank vault, my wife, you know, backups that have it. But at least that way, if something happens to me, I mean, I print a thing out for my wife, it's like this thick, we got like 60 pages. And it's all a bunch of crap. But everything we do now has to have a username and password. Mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> Some places when you let you say, I'm not fill this out first. So it's a pain. But that's how everybody's tracking us. It's just pitiful. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? What's on the iPhone FCI battle going on? Well, you know, I had some guy screw me. I was just sitting down in a little industrial industrial park, Gina's Cafe. I was sitting there one more guy coming. He goes, Yeah, that boss of yours, he's a real piece of work. Black apple shirt, I'm going to go with And he's pointing to my shirt. He goes, Yeah, he goes, I can't believe they won't help the terrorists. That's anti patriotic. I'm going, Oh, well, easy, buddy. So I'll make those decisions. I said, But there's two sides of every coin. Mm -hmm. Apple helped out in the past. They did over 60 or 70 cases with them, but it's under old operating systems. The new operating system currently, your password's fused into the device. Apple does not have a backdoor currently. They don't. There's different ways to ask people for something. If the FBI just showed up, Quietly met with Tim Cook and said, "Sir, look, we got a situation. I'm sure, you heard about it. Listen, I don't, I'm not asking you for your technology. I'm not asking you to breach it and for us to have the information. Here's the phone. If you can find anything, let us know." If Tim Cook says, "You know what? I'll see what I can do," and get give them whatever they or say, "Look, honestly, we don't have the technology right now. We'll work on something." It's a nice way to ask somebody, or say, "Well, let's go in the media. Let's try these guys." Because you know, New York New York State's making laws saying, "Well, you can't sell Apple products here if you're not going to let us in the back door and help law enforcement." Really, do a wiretap like everybody else did for years. So come on, don't be picking on Apple. It's a right to free enterprise. And I actually applaud somebody once who wants to keep our privacy at least to us. Because everybody wants our stuff. At least Apple's saying, no, this, look, people have some right to privacy. I mean, it's, it's a double-edged sword. I, I believe we should take out the terrorists too, but in the same token, it's kind of after the fact, you know, and they should, you know, they, sometimes the people are on, on the list. So. I guess the company could have done something about being able to get into it originally. Yeah, and well, you know what the, the FBI did? They changed user ID to try to get into that thing. Then they're like, well, we screwed up. Let's go ask Apple. That's how this works, guys. So, but, but I'm sure you can find a black hat hacker somewhere out there in Russia. Get him your thing for you. Another question is, I, I, unless I missed something, I think you skipped a slide and it had to do with um, the security of getting onto your, your Wi-Fi with your fingerprint. <clears throat> with your fingerprint? Yeah. I have it on a slide, but... Uh, I thought I saw a bunch of something. Oh, that was just that was just just uh, just a slide of just a graphic. Um, your fingerprint actually works pretty good on the phone. Wasn't anything you no, to I didn't say. tell you about it. No, but it actually works pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. But do more than one finger, you know, like do opposite hands. You know, maybe grab your little spouses or friends. Just your so toe. Those, yeah, your toe. <laughs> it's not working. So, everybody happy with your Apple products so far? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.